let's talk about issues faced by beginning therapists. So just know that when you begin your career as a therapist, it will be scary and uncomfortable at times. And it's totally normal for you to have concerns about your adequacy. Now, I remember when I was doing my practicum, which is a supervised uh, training experience, my supervisor quoted me some research that said that on average, psychologists don't feel competent until about eight years after their internship. So internship is your final year of supervised training as a doctoral student. And so most psychologists don't feel competent until eight years after that year. So just know that it's totally normal for you to have some questions about your adequacy well into your career. It can also be very challenging to integrate what you've learned. You're learning a lot of different material and all of that has to come together within your counseling sessions and that can be pretty intimidating and challenging. So this list is not going to be exhaustive. There are several other issues that are discussed in your book, but I just wanna touch, touch upon the issues that I encounter most commonly and in newly trained therapists. So the first issue we'll talk about is anxiety. Anxiety is totally normal and it suggests that you're aware of the uncertainty of the client's future. I mean, you're dealing with somebody's life and so it makes sense for you to be nervous about the role that you'll play in, in their behavior change. So recognize and admit your anxiety to yourself rather than denying it. And speak with peers and supervisors about your self-doubt. Certainly your colleagues will likely be feeling the same things you are and your supervisor felt these things when they were starting out. So seek out their, their counsel and, and talk to them about how you're feeling. Avoid perfectionism. Now, we all are high achievers and we want to be good at our jobs. So it makes sense to try to strive toward perfection, but try to, to overcome this habit and don't try to maintain an image of perfection because it's not real, you won't be genuine, and you know, your clients are making mistakes, your clients are growing and learning and taking risks. So why would you want to assume a stance of perfectionism? You want to model for them the fact that mistakes are gonna happen, you're not trying to be perfect, instead you're trying to be real and be genuine with them in the context of that relationship. And the only way to achieve growth is to take some risks. have to understand silence. And this is an issue that many beginning therapists face. You have to become comfortable with silence. You don't wanna feel like you must fill up every silence because your client will be thinking, they'll be processing. Their, client, uh, their silence will reveal something to you. So don't rush in and fill up that silence purely for your own comfort. You can also explore the meaning of silence with your client. So you can tell your client, you know, I've noticed that in this session, you're, you're being especially quiet. There's a lot of silence within this session. Or I noticed that when you talk about this particular topic, it takes you longer to respond. There's more silence. What, what does that mean? What are you thinking during these times? So you can explore the meaning of that silence with them. Another common issue is dealing with demand from clients. Some clients will make constant demands. And I may have mentioned before, um, having a client that would like to come in well before her sessions and stay well after her sessions and sit in the lobby area right outside of my office and drink coffee and watch TV. And that was a boundary that I had to set with her and say, you know, arrive no more than about five minutes before your, your appointment. You have about five minutes after, but you can't linger in the waiting area because that compromised the confidentiality of my other clients. So she would be able to see who was coming and going from my office, which would be, you know, violating their confidentiality. And so that was a boundary I had to set and be firm about, but also express the boundary in a way that wouldn't damage our relationship. So you want to make your expectations and boundaries clear during your initial counseling session, but certainly during the course of your relationship, other things will come up or you'll have to set a boundary. And so, you know, also remember that you are modeling appropriate boundary setting for your client. So when you set that boundary, but you say it in a way that is respectful and seeking to maintain that relationship, that will be teaching them that it's okay in their personal lives to set boundaries with others while still respecting and trying to maintain the relationship with that person. Ignoring 
Beginning therapists sometimes struggle to become aware of their own countertransference. So your countertransference is your reaction to the client, but it's based upon your personal issues rather than the client themselves. So your own issues influence the way that you receive or perceive and react to the client. And you may project your own issues onto the client. So because there's some issue within you, some struggle that you're having, you project and you see those issues within the client. And so you must engage in self-exploration. You must get a handle and address your own issues through your own therapy um, so that you don't have your personal issues impair your work with the client and potentially harm the client. Also, you need to do your own work and self-exploration so that you're not overwhelmed with the client's pain. You'll be dealing with a lot of really painful, traumatic issues, and you have to make sure that you don't allow the client's issues to overwhelm you. So you have to be present, you have to be genuine, you have to be in the session right there with the client, but don't carry your client's issues around with you because that will lead to burnout. So make sure that you're you know, getting your own therapy, working through your own issues, dealing with any emotions that may come up um, in your relationship with your clients so that those things are not things that you carry around with you outside of the session. And also new therapists often uh, struggle with declining to give advice. Many clients may seek or even demand advice from you. Um, a, lot, a lot of clients come into therapy thinking that that's what therapy is. It's going to be, um, you know, it's time for them to get your advice. And so that's why it's important during that informed consent process to let them know, to educate them about how counseling really does work. So you should not give advice because this would foster dependence on you. You don't want your client to be dependent. You want them to develop the ability to make their own good decisions. And so, you know, you also have to remember that sometimes uh, new therapists feel like they, they know what the client should do, but they don't give them advice because they're not supposed to give them advice. But that to me can be troublesome because in actuality, you don't know what the client should do. You can say what you would do in their situation, but guess what? You're not in their situation. You, you don't have their background. You don't have their experiences. You may not be of the same culture. And so it's not about what you would do in their situation. It's about helping them to understand what's best for them. So you shouldn't go into um, dealing with client issues with the stance that, well, I know what's best, but I'm not going to say because that's not how therapy works. No, you don't know what's best. And together, you're going to you're going to find out. You're going to collaborate to determine what is best for the client, but it's not that you know, you're just not telling them. So again, your role is to help clients discover their own solutions and recognize their freedom to act. It's not about uh, suggesting to them what you think is best for them. 